So I had a pine cone problem this spring and I decided to get myself a lawn sweeper. I shopped around, I found, found this uh, AgriFab uh, 42 inch uh, lawn sweeper for $185 uh, that was delivered. Of course, I had to assemble it. Uh, and spoiler alert, you can see it's already been used. It's a little dusty, but uh, it, uh, it worked pretty good. I was pretty happy with it. God, I wish I would have bought one of these a few years ago. And uh, I did rip up the basket. You can see it's kind of torn there across the top. And uh, when I did the assembly, and also it ripped a little bit while I was running it. So eventually I'm going to have to figure out how to patch the uh, basket. Uh, my total sweep time was about an hour and a half, maybe two hours. It's hard to tell. Um, and I did have to cover some of the areas three or four times. Uh, you can play with the, uh, the height adjustment way over there. And uh, you can put the brush up or down a little bit. It says that you're uh, supposed to set the brushes for about a half inch into the grass. And right now it's pretty early spring. My grass is pretty short. But in some of the bare areas, it didn't pick them up as well. Or areas that were unlevel. So you can imagine if a pine cone sitting in a little valley, it's not going to pick that up. Uh, but man, it picked up a bunch of pine cones. Um, so it And it will pick up small sticks. Uh, not recommended because the sticks can jam up the, uh, the brush and the tire stops turning and then of course it stops picking up stuff. And it can be a little hard to tell uh, when it's rotating. Sometimes if you get a little stick in there and it starts tapping, and maybe, maybe you'll be able to hear it in the video, it starts tapping, that means it's, it's rolling and the brush is turning. And when the noise stops, that means something's jammed up. Or So for this video, what I'm gonna do is uh, I'm going to show you my pine cones, so a little before and after uh, video on my pine cones so you can see what I'm dealing with. And uh, then I'll uh, show you some video of it running and picking up pine cones, uh, see if I can get some good video on that. And then finally, I'll do the assembly. And for the assembly, uh, you can fast forward to uh, this time in the video if you want to just see the assembly. So let's get started go look at some pine cones. Yeah, pine cones, as far as the eye can see. This will give you a little bit of an idea of the after picture. You see, there's still a few pine cones laying around, but oh, the vast majority, 99% of them are gone. You almost can't walk without stepping on pine cones. Probably the worst of them is uh, right back here off this big pine tree. Well, it did pick up a lot of pine cones. I got a pretty big layer in there. There's still room for more. It's picking up some sticks too. So let's see if I can put a few more in there. I'm gonna set a little bit lower. It's, uh, it's leaving behind a lot of pine, pine cones. Well, that filled it up pretty good. As a matter of fact, probably a little too full because it's hanging over the edge here. But, uh, and that looks heavy. Picked up a lot of pine needles. So that's going to be nice in the fall when I get the pine needles again. But uh, I think this was pretty, pretty effective. Uh, I know it's hard to see in this uh, light, but uh, it picked up a lot of pine cones. So even the few that it left are not going to be as much of a problem for either raking up or mowing. And, uh, Dully my mower blade, but uh, now I'm pretty pleased with this. This worked out pretty nice. Uh, I gotta find a place to dump it that my uh, wife won't be too unhappy with. All right, all right, I'm coming. All right, 
I'm going to grab my rope and give her a yank and let's see what happens. Oh my God, that's heavy. Holy camole. All right. Going to try and move forward. Oh, that was a nice dump. Yeah, this is gonna be a thumbs up. I got some uh, sweeping to do, pick up some pine cones, but I gotta figure out what to do with this pile. I think this is a good place for a fire pit. How do pine cones burn? Do they burn okay? Maybe we'll find out. So I'm going to get my uh, AgriFab uh, lawn sweeper up on the table and let's see if we can put this thing together. AgriFab 42 inch lawn sweeper, toe behind. Uh, let's see what's the model number. Yeah, I'll put it up on the screen. It's not obvious on here. Let's get this thing cut open. card thank you card and instructions 27 pages I'm gonna go ahead and take a look at this and uh, see what kind of clues I can get out of it well I uh, did uh, peruse the instructions uh, this is model number 45-032 agrifab 42 inch uh, sweeper and uh, there's a video online I'll put the uh, video link up here and it'll be in the uh, description. You can just click on the link in the description. It's, it's not bad uh, to watch the video. It can be a little painful at times. But uh, anyway, according to the instructions uh, and the video, uh, we start out by putting the brushes on. And this is the first confusing step in the, uh, in the process is uh, how, to get, how to get the brushes on because the brushes are identified with a, a red ink mark and a black ink mark. And according to the instructions, as best I can tell, is this of course is the top of the, the sweeper. And I got a big glob of grease here that's gotta be cleaned up. But anyway, we wanna flip this thing over so that the agrifab is down like this. And I believe this is the orientation that we want where this piece here is facing you. And then it looks like this brush, the red one goes here, and the black one's gonna go here. So uh, it takes uh, four bolts and four nuts. These are the smallest bolts, and the four small nuts are gonna go into this step. Put the bolt through, put the nut on. Not sure what happens if you get them reversed or upside down. Anyway, so red mark here, black mark here. Uh, 
And these four fasteners are 7 16 So I just got my quarter inch set out. Let me give that a try. And a 7 16 wrench. Use a quarter inch set that discourages you from uh, really over tightening the nuts and bolts. We'll see how long that lasts. I think that's the only thing we need the uh, 7 16 for. After that, we're going to be using, uh, for the remaining fasteners, we'll be using a half inch socket and wrench. All right, so we've got those on. We're going to flip this back over. And we're going to grab these two parts, uh, these two bars for the toe hitch, uh, toe hitch portion of it. And as you can see, this one here has a little whoop. And that's going to be facing up. So this one's going to go here. This one here has a little whoop here. So that's going to be whooping up over here. And this is all going to go on top above this bar here. And then we'll be using the uh, four of the, the four largest ones of these bolts here. There's a couple of shorter ones, but we'll be using the large ones. Four and four nuts. So we'll see if we can get this assembled. The bolts go from underneath. And the square drive will uh, lock it in to the main body. <laughs> Try not to hit myself. Probably wouldn't hurt to have an extra hand, but we'll show that. Uh, Try to show this could be done with one person. And the two longest hex bolts will fit into here with two nuts. No washers. I don't think it matters which, which way you go through. You notice I didn't tighten up the other bolts yet. Now I went over to my mower and uh, measured the height of the hitch and it's uh, just below 10 inches. So according to the instructions, the next step is to put these uh, hitch plates on. And if you have uh, 10 inches or less, which I have, then this plate's gonna go on the top and this one will go on the bottom. So got two bolts for that. These are the B bolts. With a couple of nuts. Now, interestingly enough, there's a couple of detents in here that are like V's for the bolts. So the bolts are going to go here. And the other one's going to go here. So it's just passing between these two bars. That's where the bolt is going. There's no holes, just a couple of little indents or dents in these uh, two bars. Oops, let's put a bar on the bottom. It's got four holes in it. You can see one of those holes is larger. That's for the hitch pin. So that's the one that goes away from the sweeper. So we've got two large holes here because that's where this pin's going to go. Stay.
At this point, we can tighten all these bolts up. Uh, it doesn't look like I really need an extension, but uh, half inch socket, half inch wrench. I think I'd start with these first to snug those up. I don't think the alignment of these two holes is super critical because that pin's pretty small for those holes. Yeah, the square portion of this bolt isn't quite in place. Yeah, I think I've got everything a little too tight. I'm going to loosen up the other two because these square drives aren't locked in the holes either. So the key is to make sure that that square drive is in the square hole. Tight. Tight. So you should have a, uh, a pair of hex head bolts. So these are the shortest ones left. Those will attach to this lever. And the one remaining hex head bolt, which is a little bit longer, that's gonna go to the adjustment uh, bar. So these are, this bar is gonna get assembled here and it's gonna be put on the inside like this. And for that one, we're going to put a bolt and a washer on the inside and a nut on the outside. Bolt, washer, through the bar. Whoa, come back here. And a nut. And it's a little tight in there. You get this all in there. So I've actually got this pushed down to get away from all that. Don't need the extension. I think I can use the box inch of the wrench without getting it trapped. No, 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 no. Then this handle is supposed to go on there. I'm going to use a little window cleaner. Hopefully that'll give it a little lubrication to get this thing on there. I don't want to use any oils. That's about as far as it's going to go. All right. Tight. Now the adjuster, like I said, it's a longer bolt, flat washer, and this spacer. And the spacer actually fits inside this hole. So when you tighten this up, it'll live, let this thing pivot. And that's going to go into one of these holes here. It looks like a figure eight hole. According to the instructions, it looks like it goes in this, this orientation looks like it goes in the top of that. I'm sorry, I've got this big spacer that goes on there. And then one nut. So this is how that stacks up. 
So that smallest spacer, that smallest washer has to fit inside this bracket. So when you tighten it up, make sure that's in there. Otherwise that will not go well. Half inch socket, half inch wrench. And there was uh, no washer on the inboard side, just a stack of three washers on the outboard side. So we can tighten that up and this should pivot quite easily. Relatively a little shake. So this, as you can see, kind of naturally wants it to be on the outboard side of the lever. And there's one hole here. That hole's got a square, it's a square hole. So this bolt's gonna go in there. So no washer, make sure the squares fit in the square hole. Yep, so I'm sorry. We actually need this lock washer on there. Then that. Then the last remaining is flat washer. And our little T nut. And it's tight. So now we can pull this lever to adjust the height and tighten this big wing nut down. And that'll keep the height the right height. Whew, working up a little bit of a sweat. Uh, so that finishes up the uh, body of the sweeper. So we're going to drop this down on the ground, then I'm going to work on the basket. So I've kind of laid out my uh, pins down here uh, according to where they go, according to the instructions. Uh, you're going to want to pull out this big uh, pin. It's the only one of this size. It's got a little bit extra, little bit extra whoop on there compared to the other 10 or so. So we've got a good contrast there. That's for the hitch pin. So I'm going to put that with the hitch pin and the two spacers because that's what you're actually going to connect it up to the mower with. Um, all the other clips are all the same, so you can't mix them up. There's a couple different pin sizes, and uh, we'll go ahead and get started on that. First thing we're gonna do is uh, try to cut this without cutting the fabric. There we go. We get that out of the way. Unroll this to see what we got. Ooh. All right, so the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to take this long flat bar and we're going to put this in here and that's going to help keep this thing unrolled. There we go. So I've got it sticking out on both sides, got this thing flat. You can see that uh, this here is the top part. So those flat bars going in the bottom part. Next, we've got two of these uh, black bars. They're identical. Uh, got the same part number. And uh, those are gonna go in here. And it's a little confusing on the instructions where this one goes. It looks like it's gonna hook in here at the top. It does have two sets of holes that are closer together, and these two sets of holes, uh, let's see if we get this oriented right. There's two sets of holes, one set of two holes <laughs> that are far apart, and there's one set of holes that are closer together. So I'm gonna figure out which way this is supposed to go in there, because apparently there's an up and down to this. And it looks like the closer holes, wow, that is not clear at all. Well, I don't think it actually matters because only two of the holes get used. So for the top part, I'm going to go ahead and put the two closest holes together. They're going to be on the bottom. The farther away holes are going to be on the top. So let's see how that goes. The fabric loops here kind of in the center of the top at the at the top of the uh, bagger. Okay. 
Alright, all right, done. This bar in. So here's the other bar, two closer holes facing up. The upper bar, I've got the two holes, closest holes facing down. And then we're going to take these two rods, insert one in there and one in there. Hole and hole. Kind of stands up there. Okay, then we're gonna slide this through here. Now this is this bar here has got the flat on this end. It's uh, uh, tapered down here at the top because that's gonna fit into here, and that's gonna take one of these uh, small one of the six pins with a couple of clips. So first thing you do is you slide it in this slotted hole, let's call it. It's going to go up there, and that's going to fit in this hole. And it's matching partner, but you can see here that there's a bigger flat on one side than on the other, but I, supposedly it doesn't matter. So we're going to slide that one through this side. That's going to go into this end of the bar. That's how that fits. And we're going to put uh, these two pins according to the instructions. It looks like it goes from the top down, which makes sense. Try not to uh, rip the fabric too much. Then we just clip that on. When I clip it on, you got to go uh, all the way through, all, all the way through, like that. Top down, insert clip, snap, done. Next. Next, we're going to take uh, these two angled bars. And once again, they're identical. But if you flip them over, you can see one has a bigger flat than the other. But apparently it doesn't matter which way it goes. Those are going to get inserted into the, the black U-bar at the bottom. Also with the, the little P-pins and clips. Now this one I'm going to assume the pin should go in from the bottom up. Instructions, and that's what they say. Pin goes in from the bottom up. And a clip on, oops, I don't put a clip in so it doesn't fall out. Mosquitoes, I hate mosquitoes. Okay, two little stubby pins, a couple clips. Pin goes from the inside out, okay. <laughs> Ooh, that rips kind of easy. Okay, snap there. Push that all the way in. Push that one all the way in. See if you can get that pin in. It's a little bit of a stretch. Push that all the way in. Pull that all the way over. 
and the bottom part, the bottom bar goes on the inside. There we go. Okay, next we're going to lift this bar that's on the plastic, lift that up with a couple of these pins, the small the small of the six pins, push that through the hole and pin it. Pins going from the outside and going in. Give that a little wiggle. Put the clip on there. I'm going to try and take these two bars out. Ugh. Let's see if I get these snapped on. And that's going to be interesting to get those two bars back in. Okay, I got those snapped. I can see that somebody's going to poke that right through the fabric. But in bending the bar, you can kind of see how far I'm bending it. Give you kind of an idea of where I ended up. Bent quite a bit, but I got the snaps on. This thing's pretty tight. I don't see anywhere where... I got any more slack left to get, except the spot right up here where I ripped it. So be careful when you start pulling on it, because you can rip it fairly easy at the seams. Okay, these two are next. So on the, uh, this is the tapered end on the long end. This cup goes, a cap goes on there. So we'll put that on both of those. Then the two biggest pins. Apparently they go right in here, right underneath this fabric. Maybe that's another thing we want to put in uh, before we put those two bars in there. I don't think there's any up or down on this. Cap goes on the top, taper part goes on the bottom. Clip. Next is the tipping rope. So just gonna take the free end. Just gonna tie a knot and a loop in here. I think that's gonna go over the top here. Since this is the pulling rope. Just loop it over like that. Just for fun, I'm going to tie a loop on this end here. Not too tight, but I can pull that out if I have to. All right. So the whole hopper is ready. Now we get to attach it to the main body of the sweeper. Okay. Got my last two pins, last two clips. Well, except for the hitch pin. So we're gonna pull these together and put them together. Pin goes in from the top. Wiggle that way right, wiggle its way right in there. Clip on the bottom.
All right, and that does it. So if I take the hitch, put it down here where it's about level, then you can see that the, uh, the whole basket actually fits right up against this angle, uh, angle piece. So when you go to dump it, Yeah, you can pull that a long ways and it doesn't go over center. Pretty decent design from that standpoint. And we're ready to hook it up to the mower. Uh, so we'll be back in a little bit once we get the mower charged up and we'll get this thing hooked up and take it out for a test drive. So in order to pin this beast, what I did was uh, I took my two spacers and uh, taped them up with some masking tape so it's a little less clumsy to handle. And uh, we'll push this thing down. This will make uh, the tow hitch here about level for my application anyway. Put the spacer down there, stick the pin in through both holes, and then put the clevis uh, pin in or whatever this is. Which of course you gotta do blind. Normally I put this thing in upside, upside down so I can see it. There it is. And we're good to go. I right, we can set the the uh the height of the sweeper here just loosen up our big wing wing nut and then uh, pull this lever back or forth or wherever uh right about here according to the instructions on the uh, sweeper you're supposed to be about half an inch uh into the top of the grass so you're just supposed to be skimming the top of the grass well the rope is uh pretty short so what I think I'm going to try is uh, I found this piece of plastic. I'm going to cut it up and then uh, screw it here in the cup holder and then uh, hook the rope on here. And uh, at least uh, temporarily so we can see how this works. So I cut that uh, bracket down. Left a little hook for some reason. Don't really need it because it's kind of hooked in the wrong direction. It's probably going to help hook onto something else. And I uh, got a couple of screws. Drilled a couple holes. The screws aren't the same size, but close enough. I'm gonna drill a couple pilot holes in here and we'll see what happens. That should be tight enough. So now I can take the uh, rope and I can just hook it on here. Hopefully it'll be easy enough to grab and tilt. Let's see how much stroke I got to go to tilt it. All right, we're going to give it a try. <laughs> 